You know the Earth is way stronger than the Moon, and its gravity is a lot greater. Why doesn't the Earth just pull the Moon and smash it into itself? If there was no orbit, the Earth would for sure do something like this, and it would pull the Moon and smash it into itself. But the orbit of the Moon and the speed it has, it doesn't allow the Moon to come towards the Earth. It's like sending a ball that has insane speed and it does one turn around the Earth and comes back to you. The Moon is spinning like that, but the ball on Earth is gonna have a lot of drag because of the atmosphere. But the Moon, it's in a vacuum, so there's nothing stopping it from going around. The speed of Moon's orbit is 3600 kilometers an hour. And with this speed, every 27 days, it completes one orbit around Earth. After 27 days, the Moon has spin on itself as well. You might say, no, the Moon doesn't spin around on itself. You are right, it doesn't spin around itself. But since one side is locked towards Earth, every orbit it does around Earth, it spins one time. So with the laws of physics, you really can't pull the moon towards the earth. But not if something changes, and you could say it's impossible. But what if we change something and pull the moon towards the earth? If the moon wants to hit the earth, its speed has to lower. But how can we do such thing? We really don't know how to lower the speed of the moon and we don't have any tools that could do it. But let's imagine we have a tool that could slow down the speed of the moon. We have to say if we lower the speed, it's going to continue orbiting. But each orbit is going to get closer and closer to Earth and it eventually will hit the planet. But let's go and see how this will happen. You know the moon is 384,000 kilometers away. So after a month of slowing down, it's going to go to 200,000 kilometers in distance. So basically, it came 184,000 kilometers closer. In this situation, the moon will be bigger and it will be brighter, but no other difference. In normal situations, the biggest impact the moon has on Earth are the tides, and it pulls the ocean waters a half a meter up and down. And this is because of the gravity of the moon. So if it's getting closer to us, what will happen to the tides? Each day, it will come a little higher, until eventually the water will rise so much that it will flood nearby cities. But just like the old tides, the water is not going to lower because it has turned into a flood now. In the next month, the distance will go from 200,000 kilometers to 133,000 kilometers. In this situation, the tides will go 10 meters up and down. The cities near the ocean are basically doomed. During a high tide, the ocean water will enter the cities and go into the river. And salt water will basically pollute all the river. And it will eventually get to farmlands. The moon is still not even close, 133,000 kilometers away. But it has already messed up life on Earth. Everything stops working. The power plants that are near water are all flooded. All transportation is paralyzed and everybody is hungry and can't do anything about it. In the third month, the distance will go from 133,000 to 100,000 kilometers. In this distance, all the satellite 
will be playing ping pong with the moon and the earth. If they're in between, they're basically doomed. Let's see what happens. In the fifth month, we're at 60,000 kilometers. The tides will be as high as 100 meters now. In this moment, most humans have died, except the ones that are extremely high up, and they have to have access to fresh water. When it reaches 100 meters, this is the maximum distance water can get high. But the moon's gravity has turned down the average depth of ocean. Because the water is way more spread out throughout the earth, and the average depth of the oceans will be 3 kilometers. Basically, without the heights, most of the earth is water. The moon would affect the earth so much that it will activate all the tectonic plates and they will all start shaking. The earth will have earthquakes that it has never had before. The stress that's being applied to the crust of earth will activate the volcanoes as well. But the main issue is still headed our way. The moon is not even close. It's still 60,000 kilometers away. At the seventh month, it will be 40,000 kilometers away. In this moment, the moon is so close to Earth that it will be spinning 24 hours a day. So the same speed as the spin of the Earth. Basically, half of the Earth can watch the moon all day long. In this moment, half of the Earth is in a low tide, and the other half is on a high tide. Basically, half of the world has all the water, and the other half doesn't have anything. Basically, the dry half is just desert and messed up places, and the other place is a water world. But don't think the moon is chilling. The stress put on the moon is greater than the stress put on Earth, and it's slowly turning into an egg-shaped moon. Even if it hits or not, it doesn't change anything, because every living thing should be dead by now. In the 11th month, the distance will be at 10,000 kilometers. There have been so many volcanoes that has erupted by now, that all the ash and smoke are covering the sky and that causes the sunlight to not shine on earth anymore and that is why it's getting extremely cold. The earth is messed up and the egg-shaped moon is still coming. It's headed our way like a kamikaze. But the earth is stronger than we thought. At 10,000 kilometers, there's so much stress on the moon that the egg shape will stretch so far that it will collapse it. But it won't head towards Earth anymore, and it will have a thick ring like Saturn around Earth. But nobody is alive on Earth to see a moment like this. All tides are gone now. But the volcano and the ashes is caused will make the earth go through an ice age because the sunlight is not reaching earth and everything is freezing. Either way, everybody's dead, but there might be a chance some people are alive. Like for example, people that were in submarine. We can accept that those people are alive, but when they leave their submarine, they're confronted by a hell and there's no chance of living here. Because if they can accept the place, there's no food left for them, unless they eat themselves.